Hi guys, this is Arif from TechShare. Today I'm going to uh, discuss about uh, Sitecore pipelines and processors. So again, I mean, this is a really basic um, uh, kind of building blocks of uh, Sitecore. So if you are a Sitecore developer, then definitely you definitely know about pipeline and processor of Sitecore. So this video is not going to um, the, the people who are really expert uh, of Sitecore but those who actually need to know about uh, sidecore pipelines and processors uh, a bit more like why we need to use sidecore pipeline processor what is the role of sidecore pipelines and processor in sidecore domain this is something uh, you know really really important so sidecore pipelines and processors are kind of the main extension point of sidecore so when sidecore uh, released then um, definitely uh, sidecore is kind of uh, it's very flexible in terms of uh, the extension point so if you want to extend an existing functionality if you want to add some new kind of thing your own thing into the existing functionality then um, sidecore pipeline is really really important and it's going to support uh, this kind of functionality Again, if you also develop any kind of feature in Sitecore, then this is also your responsibility to, to allow your feature to be extended in a certain level by, by using uh, pipeline and processor in, that, in your feature as well. So I'll give you some sort of example of uh, Sitecore pipelines and processors, and definitely I'll, I'll, I'll give you a kind of a hands-on of uh, Sitecore pipeline as well. Okay, so let me jump into the Sitecore. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a Sitecore. I also installed the Habitat solution in, in this instance of Sitecore. So I am using right now Sitecore 9.2, you can see that. So again, Habitat is, uh, you know, definitely what is Habitat and uh, 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 why Habitat came. Uh, and what is definitely the pattern of Helix as well. So Helix is kind of a pattern and practice and Habitat is kind of the implementation of Helix. Uh, I believe you also know uh, this kind of thing as well. I'll, I'll create another video where I will try to briefly explain the pattern of uh, Helix of Sitecore. And then probably I'll uh, uh, go through all the different different components and layers of, of, uh, of Helix in that video. But today I'm not going to discuss that. So here again, I mean, uh, this is the instance. So if I use the um, show config, uh, show config is here. So site core slash um, site core slash admin slash show config. So this path I already have opened on tab. And then if you go here, so this is actually, I, I if you search for pipelines, then you'll see, uh, sorry, pipelines. Yes, so you'll see all the pipeline are registered here in this section. So show config is really, really important in terms of knowing all the existing pipelines and processors and all the other configuration that normally Sitecore uses. So for example, if you want to debug your feature or existing feature, then you really need to know the details of that feature in terms of uh, what is the pipeline it is used internally and what is the processors also inside the pipeline, everything. So my intention today is to extend on pipeline and uh, I'll give you the, the importance or I'll give you the the example of that so for example here you can see all the pipelines like this is this is a pipeline called initialize so what is initialize pipeline so if you want to know about this thing details then you definitely can follow the site code documentation but some kind of you know pipeline you really need to know in order to uh, work with site code for example what is http begin request begin pipeline so this is kind of you really need to know about these details if you want to extend a core functionality of Sitecore. For example, if you want to add a certain functionality uh, in the very, you know, core level or, uh, you know, when the request just instantiate, if you want to intercept that particular uh, point, then definitely you need to extend or add a processor in that level. So HTTP request begin pipeline is kind of very, very, uh, you know, um, low 
All right. So this uh, pipeline HTTP request begin is a very, very, you know, low level pipeline where it does all the basic things that we need to do before a request starts. So, yeah, I mean, you need to know all the things, all these things in details. If you want to extend or if you want to add a functionality or a feature that will work in that level, so that, that are what I actually mean. So you will see heaps of pipelines, especially if you add more features of Sitecore, for example, different different components of Sitecore, then you will see uh, different, different different pipelines also, you know, is going to add uh, in that configuration. So for example, this HTTP request begin, if you just simply in, install a Sitecore basic instance, then you will see maybe 15, 15 processors are registered in there. But if you add other component, uh, you know, then you will see it grows. Probably it will go to 30, 40, 50, I don't know, even more. So that is kind of, you know, because all those components actually works in a level where maybe it needs to instantiate some data before the request begins. So that's why HTTP begin request kind of thing. So HTTP request begin is like, you know, re request is just executing one by one by one with different processors or kind of, you know, uh, thing then this pipeline executes in that level so what i'm going to uh, yeah I, I understand or i believe that you understand all the things what i'm going to uh, explain to you so again you will say a lot of things if you want to uh, create your own feature then definitely you can also add your pipelines and definitely you will have one or more processors in there and then uh, that will allow other user to extend if it uh, you know requires uh, in time so yeah so what i'm gonna do is like uh, yeah you'll see a lot of lot of them so let's just go here render field okay so render field pipeline executes when um site core uh, field is going to render in that particular point of time it intercepts intercepts and it executes uh, all these processors one by one so you need to know there's the know that the 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 pattern or the pipeline concept is it actually executes one by one so it will execute the very first one for example for example this set parameters type or uh, this processor and then it will execute this set web editing parameters so what is the concept is um if you open one of the one of the processors so let me uh let me go here and let me show you this processor for example the processor is empty processor so what i have written here is this is a class my custom field processor and you can you know type any name and then you must uh, um, must have to maintain a method called process and now here the arguments is is depends but definitely these arguments extend from pipeline arguments or some sort of thing that's why it is going to support so if you see here go to definition then you will see this is the pipeline arguments right so this field uh, arguments is a wrapper of pipeline arguments with some other you know extended kind of properties or methods to support that kind of pipeline so it is up to you you can actually use pipeline arguments as well but as necessary you need to know that certain pipeline and processor which kind of type is is, is using itself so if you want to execute that one so i know that um, this particularly this pipeline uh, this pipeline render field pipeline so it uses this uh, um, this render field arguments so i use that and then it doesn't have anything right now so what is going to do is when this render field pipeline executes and it will execute definitely uh, each of the field when it tries to render in the browser then you will have a chance to to get that call in that method and you can actually add your functionality if you want to need so here you'll see a lot of processors so my intention as an example uh, to give it to you is i'm going to execute this um, this processor after after get text field value so the my intent is any kind of text field that we use in sitecore i am going to add some default values along with the original value so 
Okay, so render a fill argument. So if you see this arguments has a, a value, field value. So this field value is the value itself. So for example, if I open this site, so you can see this, this is a, no, not this one. This is a normal text field, but we are actually dealing with that text, a rich text editor. So this is a rich text editor. How I, I know that because it has this editing text. You can see the HTML and also the design view. So what my intention is anytime. So for example, if you, so this is this, this rich text field. So this field exists in the site code. Um, in item so if you go there or even you can actually go here and you can modify so what i mean it uses for example this site habitat has almost uh, maybe a couple of thousands of different text field in different different pages or items right so it's really hard so if you want to achieve a feature where maybe you want to add a default text whatever the text you want you want to add in the bottom bottom position of your this text field like here for example so click here go here so what i'm going to do is something like this so here i wanna write something default text for example you'll see here something like this so it is quite easy right so you can save that publish that but you have a thousand or heaps of different different text fields. So how are you gonna ask if if you have a feature that will do something like that? So I'm just giving you an example, not like a real time or in a real real scenario. You're not gonna have this kind of thing. But in, in for the sake of uh, you know the example, I'm giving this kind of example to you. So. So it's really hard to go each of the text field and add your default text. But what else you can do is if you really know that, okay, uh, uh, the text render pipeline exists and it executes for each of the text field in the site in that particular page. So what you can do is if you intercept one of the processor that deal with this text field, and if you, you know, uh, have your own processor in between that will get the value text value and add your default text then your feature will be implemented by using that processor quite easily so that is the magic of sitecore or i would say the pipeline and processor of sitecore it's really important you really understand you have to understand the importance of this so let me give you an example so i'm not gonna save that on refresh and what i'm gonna do is now is this is the this is the processor this is my own processor so i'm writing a own processor and here what i'm gonna do is this text field is read only so you cannot say that whatever the value it has so text field is equal to field value then class something at the end so you can't do that because this text field is read only so the other option sitecore gives you is there is a after parameter so after is anything any value after um, the original value if you want to add so this kind of thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a div and then i can say is 4 and i can simply say copyright so this is just for the sake of example i will say copyright re for example and then you can say is 4 end and then div right so so what i'm i'm going to I, I just did is just nothing but this so now what i'm gonna do is i'll publish so uh i'll publish uh, this things uh, to the site so let's go and uh, open the bin folder and then copy so you also need to understand that, um, okay, let's go. Here. So you can, uh, you know, configure your project to publish automatically here, but uh, I did not do that. But yeah, that is really, really easy. So now, 
So that is that is also very easy. So to tell us to tell Sitecore where should uh, this processor um, execute. So to to do that, what do you need to do? You need to create a configuration file. So the con location of the configuration file is so I already copy paste this DLL. But the another important thing is if you open the app config, and then you will see all the configuration file here. And then if you go site code, and then this is all site code specific configuration. Basically, those are nothing but some configuration with with pipelines and processors attached to it. Um, okay, so my intention is uh, the the configuration. See the configuration. So you also need to maintain the same kind of configuration. So you can copy paste until this pipeline. So I already have in the project. You can see. So I I I use this kind of path app config include zzz and then i use whatever the name i really wanted to use so so this is the pipelines and render render field why i use this because sidecore will pet sidecore will place my processor in this level render field so let's open the render field let's go there uh, okay this is the this is the processor list this is the pipeline and then i i tell that okay this is my uh, this is my type my custom field processor actually this one you need to add you know use the fully qualified name so class name with namespace and also the tie or the assembly name and then what i'm telling that hey use my processor after patch after this get text field value so you can search here get text field value and then this is uh, get text field value. And after that, this is my pipeline, pipeline example, blah, blah, blah. So actually I registered this one before, but just now I replaced um, with this uh, extra, extra line, this extra line. So if I now, if I now refresh this, this, uh, Page, then you will see some some magic happens. Let's refresh that. So what you are gonna see is every text uh, rich text field it uses, um, it will add a extra extra value like this. So look, this is the this is the this is the checking I use. So if I use that, if the field type is rich text box, then it should continue here. If not, then it will return from here. Okay, it's loading. Uh, it will take a bit time because uh, yeah, I just copy paste the DLL. It should recycle the application pool. All right, so you can see now so it load it is loading actually so it will take a bit time more time because i actually loaded this one in experience editor so that's why it is taking a bit extra time but you can already see that copyright arif right so every every places where so where we have uh, this um, uh, this text field you'll see that it uses this copyright after this right so it is not a, it is not using it is not using the existing content but it, it straight away use this uh, this copyright field after after this one so you'll see you'll see that everywhere so let's go to other page so let's go to okay let me open it in the um okay so now i'm i'm i i okay let me go to let me go here and this just open in preview mode so that i can use my site as a preview uh, non-editable mode so that will give you a lot of uh, uh, flexibility so you can see here this copyright arif came here so everywhere everywhere where it uses even here copyrighted so if you go uh, to any module now so for example about getting started for example so you'll see 
everywhere everywhere you have some some data uh, that you have so you you know now the power of pipeline and processor i understand that you should know that and um yeah i mean this is just an example i just give it to you so my intention is to give you the idea of uh, processor and pipeline and why we need to extend or need to use that uh, you know when we really need to uh, change the behavior of existing functionality and then definitely you can you can use this one so similarly if you create your new feature and then if you use if you split down your feature in different different processors then that will allow user to uh, to to change the behavior that they need so for example if you have two processor and then one of the processors if user other user want to change that then they can actually replace that processor with their processor as well and then they can entirely change the processor behavior also they can add a new processor maybe after your processor and there they maybe you know they would have uh, modified um, some of the values so that the next processor will take that from there and accordingly change the behavior so if if you understand what i'm what i mean then then i think you will be you'll be really benefited along the way if you are a site code developer so that that is there so i think i really wanted to make this video quite short but it's it's, it's already 15 minutes on uh, 15 minutes over so today i really don't wanna uh, you know uh, speak much about this i really hope you understand the concept of sidecore pipelines and processor and uh, i'll always recommend you guys to uh, go through the documentation of sidecore um, pipeline and processor you really don't need to go all the pipeline and processor but what you need to know is the very basic or very fundamental pipelines and processor of sidecore so that you understand uh, that where sidecore mvc started working at, or which uh, pipeline is re responsible if you want to change the behavior of sidecore mvc or if you want to add your own kind of you know rendering then where is the perfect place to inject that so that is something you really want to know so if you really want to be uh, in a position where you are uh, you are really want to you really want to develop a very you know complex solution if you then definitely you need to you need to get that point uh, to understand all the details things so i'll also put in the description about the sidecore pipelines and processor uh, you know uh, website link where you can go and check that out all the different different core pipeline and processor of sidecore and uh, yeah i'll come to you in a next uh, video very soon till then bye bye have a good day and see you later